Right now, however, uh, I have the Los Angeles Executive Director of the Council on American Islamic Relationships. Uh, Hussam, are you there? Yes. Hussam Ailoush, thank you for joining us. So what we want to get into is the comments by the Republican presidential candidates, both Donald Trump and Ben Carson. Uh, ben Carson particularly made a comment that I think a lot of people would find problematic, if not offensive, which was he did not feel a Muslim that he could advocate, that was the word he used, for a Muslim to be the president of the United States. Help us understand the impact uh, he has had by making a statement like that. It's, it's hard to explain. It's hard to understand, certainly. Uh, Mr. Carson is certainly entitled to, to, to share, to view, to hold, as many bigoted views as he wishes. <laughs> it's a free country. No yeah, problem it's free, free to be a bigot. Okay, nice. It's free, exactly. But he's not entitled to bypass our Constitution, especially if he's running for president. And right. our Constitution is very clear. No test shall be ever required from anyone. No religious test sh should it be required for anyone as a qualification to public office. And if he does not know that, maybe he should take a break from his campaign this year and, and learn the Constitution. Otherwise, he's entitled to his views. It's shameful that in this day and age, we still have to talk about someone's national origin or religious background uh, as when they run for office. I thought we were done with that. Can, can, I, can I ask you something, which is I, it's something you must be sort of contending with all the time, which is h how do you get people to, to distinguish people of certain religious communities versus extremists? I, I know they're extremists of all bent. Uh, trust me, I understand. But, sure. the, but a lot of your time must be spent trying to make that distinction. I wonder what, what strategies you use. How do you do that? I mean, first of all, like you said, we, we, we try to remind everyone that bad apples exist in every case. And we have the KKK, you know, the white supremacist groups in our history, not so long and so far away uh, from recent times. Uh, Muslims, like any other group, will have their bad guys too. I mean, the key thing is to humanize. Uh, the people we're talking about. We're talking right. about American Muslims. These are the teachers, the doctors, the neighbors, your classmates, your co-workers, like everyone else, uh, trying to, to have a decent life for themselves and their children. And, and Hassam, I, I know plenty of Muslims, and, and they are lovely. In fact, they're, the ones I know are more community-minded than almost anybody I know. They're, they're very, I, maybe it's a response to all this, but they're very, very, very much uh, focused on not just their community, but the community at large. And, and, is the uh, what would you say to somebody who comes to you and says, "Well, fine, great, but what is the Muslim community doing to control their bad apples?" Well, they're doing a lot. I mean, first of all, usually the the, the question itself is, is 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 not a fair question because it's almost like stopping some average white Christian person and say, "What are you doing to stop the white supremacist groups or the KKK?" I don't think every person should be held r responsible and accountable for the bad apples in their community, because we don't operate as, as some monolithic, uh, controlled, robotic community. I, you know, I can't control what another Muslim does should, next door to me. I can't even control what my son does. Should, let alone <laughs> should you, that's else. funny. Should, but, should, but, you, should you, though, be making some concerted effort, given that it's, it's, it's sort of what you're being painted with that brush, it, right? So true, would you wish true. you could control that or make an effort to and do that, so? And despite, exactly, despite what I said, Still, we do feel that it's a moral responsibility that we carry towards our religion, our country, to make sure that people know what Islam is, and in, at the same time counter the extremism, the extremism and the, the, and the violence of, of, of some people who claim to be Muslim. So uh, Muslims' calls from the U.S. and around the world have spoken unequivocally against groups like such as ISIS. American Muslims have, have done everything they can to educate uh, their own about what Islam stands for, so no one would fall prey to the extremist ideology. Now, so but at the end of the day, there will always be bad apples anyway. Right. So we're 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. Right. And so, so when you hear comments like Ben Carson, what, what do you think was, go aside from putting it under the rubric of being bigoted, what do, what do you think, I think what was going through he his head was extremism, right? That's what was in his, his, no, um, what, his I, body, I, I, and he was feeling that, right? No, I think what he was, what was going, I mean, he's, he's a brain surgeon, for God's sake. I think he knows the difference between a tiny, tiny minority of extremists and the overwhelming majority of Muslims who are peace-loving, law-abiding uh, citizens of this world. Uh, he knows very well the difference. I think what, he, what was going in his mind was voters. He was speaking to a, a very radical 
extremist base within the Republican Party uh, that actually, when they hear Muslim bashing, that's music to, music to their ears. And, and for them, hey, maybe he was hoping he would shift some of Trump's votes maybe to, to, to his camp. Uh, and that's shameful. That is shameful that he's, he's playing. I'm, I'm not sure he's that much of a politician. You know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't see him playing politics that much. I think he just, because uh, he's so steeped in his own, you know, he has his own ideological bent. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he were to say something similar against other religious groups, too. I, I wouldn't be surprised. You know what I mean? It, it, he, he has yeah, one way of looking at the world, and that's that. That's true. That is true. But I think it's one group that you can get away with. Nowadays. Yes, it's, that's right. And that's exactly right. And that, that's so why it interests me. Because I, cause I, I asked him, I'm, 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 it interests me because he, he does get away with it. And I'm trying to figure out what, why. <laughs> why is, and I think it's the extremism. That's why I wanted to have that conversation with you. And I, I um, you know, I, again, my Muslim friends, I, I feel bad for them that they have to carry the burden of this. But, but I think it's on you. I don't know how, we, how you don't carry it, you know. Right. You know, well, the the key to it is, first of all, you know, we can't turn the clocks back. I mean, the the it's not going to change. American Muslims, like every other American, has the right to be active in their country and have has the right to aspire, including my own children, to aspire to become president. Uh, no one can stop that. What, what what people like Carson end up doing, they poison the atmosphere and the climate. They justify and they, they fan the flame of hatred yes. in our country yes. toward that community. Yes. So when we hear about hate crimes, when we hear about mosques being vandalized, when we hear about young Muslims being arrested at their schools after coming back, you know, coming to school with a clock or an invention, it is a direct result of, of such irresponsible uh, rhetoric from people like Carson and others. Hussam, I've got to take a break. Is there a website where people can go to get more information? Certainly they can visit the CARE website, which is care, C-A-I-R, dot com. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it.